Well, let me start out by saying, I mean, the IFC is highly committed to Nigeria, and, and MAS Lore is uh, in Nigeria. She's got a big team here, and I think it's still the largest destination in Africa for IFC investment. This ranking, though, does highlight that we are not making as much progress as needed in Nigeria on ease of doing business, on infrastructure. It's just complex and costly to do business here. So I think the, the federal government should take it as a signal just to make more of an effort to make this a business friendly environment. And of course, I think most uh, of the viewers would remember that in 2018, I believe, Ghana, which is only one seventh the population, got more foreign direct investment than, than Nigeria. Than Nigeria. Did. Okay, and then we also uh, understand that uh, with all of these things happening now, how would it potentially affect the economic outlook for Nigeria in 2020? Well, I think us at PwC, uh, IMF, World Bank uh, have all put out very similar forecasts, which is that the GDP, official GDP growth will be around 2.5%. Um, the reason for that is there's still not enough investment. Uh, even if people decided to invest, even if the investment env environment improved right now, investment plans are made for 2020. So it's almost certain that we're going to have declining income per capita mm -hmm. in 2020 because if we grow at 2.5 percent and population grows at 2.7 or 2.8 percent, then income per capita will continue to decline. That said, and we still need to make these reforms and make it more attractive, not necessarily to get faster growth this year, but to start to accelerate in 2021, 2022. All right, and we also know that regarding the issue of the human capital, you know, challenge that Nigeria is facing. The president has said that he's expecting to take out about 100 million people out of this particular gap. Do you see this really happening? Well, I think, you know, we, we've commented on there, um, and I think it's fantastic. A year ago when the president said it, uh, there's now a clear goal. I think Nigerians can hold the president accountable. Are we making progress here in Nigeria of lifting 100 million people out of, prop out of poverty? Now that said, uh, is the federal government making the hard decisions to do that? So to give one example, and we're not the only commentators, many people are saying it, but the country chooses to spend 750 billion naira a year in 2020 on the fuel subsidy. The total mm -hmm. federal government allocation to education, if I understand correctly, is about 220 billion. So the decision is made to subsidize fuel rather than invest in Nigerian children and young people. Is that the right decision if we're really going to have people lifted out of poverty? All right.